All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We are on day 113 of our trading series where we are selling options for income. I'm recording just about every single trade live here on the channel in this playlist in its entirety. Like I said, we're on day 113. We haven't made any trades for a few days until today. And we're going to be talking about the trades that we're making or that we've made. I actually previously was recording the video. I paused the video just to pull up my uh, VPN because I'm currently inside of the U.S. And the website uh, is location has a location restriction for the U.S., but which is fine. You can just use a VPN. I turned on my Tour Guard VPN. By the way, there's a link in the description. They are not a sponsor to this channel. However, uh, it is the VPN that I use. I went to turn it on, finished recording the video, and realized I never unpaused the video. So I need to show you exactly what trades I've made because I'm trying to keep this uh, playlist as transparent as possible. All too often, when you see videos trading online, people talk about hypotheticals. They talk about, hey, if you do this strategy, you do this strategy, this can happen. Or they come over here to a chart like this and they'll pull up the daily or the weekly and they'll say, hey, you know, we got to look at this. That's not a good chart. Let me pull up uh, a daily here. They'll say, hey, we got to look at this trend line. We got to look at the, you know, the what, what where's the trend going or it's trading within this channel and this indicator and that indicator. And, you know, we didn't have the emotional fortitude to stay in this trade long enough. So our clients got so many, so much more money, yada, yada, yada. You hear stuff like that all the time when you look at trading content online. And there's nothing wrong with it. Like, I understand it. I'm not saying people are necessarily being um, disingenuous or anything like that. Um, however, what I will say is on this series, I'm doing my best to be as transparent as possible. So earlier I came in here, I had about $1,200 of available buying power and we were able to make, um, I think it was about $48, I think. Let me see. Let me go look at my history here. Um, trade, open order positions, balances. Here's where we want to go. Nope. History. There we go. All right. And then we come over here to trades and this is the trade that we made earlier. So we haven't traded for three days. People are always like, how long does it take you to trade? Well, we made these four trades three days ago, and then we didn't trade three days before that, and then it was two days before that. So we don't even place trades every single day. I mean, I'm telling you, selling options can be one of the simplest things to be able to do. doesn't mean that it's without risk. Um, however, we placed this trade we made, there we go, we made $47.94 minus fee, fees, um, and... Yeah, so here's where that trade is right now. Uh, I believe it's this one here, right here. We sold 3.4 puts, and we're currently down about $14. Most of that is the bid, ask, spread, and the fees for the trade. So let me just show you this. Oftentimes, if you see me make a trade, it doesn't start out in the green. Um, and the reason, it, it theoretically, it, I mean, it, it's sort of in the green because typically when we make a trade, we have a 90% chance of success. We know that going into the trade based on the delta. If that does make sense to you, go back to the very beginning of this playlist. So we only we only take trades typically have a 90% chance or greater of success. And then once we make the trade, because we are selling options and because we're, we're selling puts and calls, the funds go, the collateral goes directly immediately to our account where we can theoretically trade against it. What will oftentimes happen, though, is you'll see that the trade's currently in red. All you're seeing when you see that is you're simply seeing that uh, the cost of the trade. And let me show you what that looks like. When you make a trade, and let's just say you're going to sell a November 1st. In fact, I think we can go to that one. I think that was a November 8th. Yeah, 2200. So notice right here, whenever you sell it, this is the price that you're going to get. This is what you're going to get. So if you sell three of these, you're going to make $45.30 minus, by the way, whatever the trading fee is. So when it shows up on your account, what you will see is the most you could sell that for if you were trying to sell it back, essentially, or selling is the wrong word, because you sell it to earn the fee. When you close out the trade, you're essentially buying it back, but you can't buy it back for $15. you got the bid as spread. So notice there's about $2.30 here. So whenever you sell options. So if I sold three of these, I would end up with $2.30 times three, like $9.30, I guess, or $9.90. Is that right? Yeah, $9.90 is what we'd end up having, plus whatever the fee is to close out the trade, So for or to make the trade. So for example, when we go to make this trade, the fee is going to be $1.57. So it would be $9.30 plus $1.57, theoretically, is what you're going to be in the red at the time of making that trade. 
but you still have those funds going to your collateral. It just says if you tried to close out the trade immediately, it would take those funds plus that fee back out of the, the collateral. I'm hoping that's clear to you. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so whenever you always expect when you put on a trade for the first time, it shows a small negative. You, you always expect that. That's not a big deal. That's where that negative is coming from. Hopefully that's clear to you. And as you can see, we're at $21,952, almost at $22,000 in collateral. Keep in mind, we started this thing at, I think we we're at $19,000 at one point, And now we're at almost $22,000. Again, we should be doing between 40 to 60% per year. That is the goal with this strategy. That is what we're looking to do. My goal is by the end of the month, which we are close to the end of the month now. We're on the 21st. So by the end of the month, I'm hoping, I'm expecting this will be at about $22,000. And then by the end of next month, which will be November, I'm hoping that we're right at or real close to 23,000. And I would like to end of the year to be at 24,000. I do have about, I don't know, 500 or $1,000 more that I can add to my collateral value. I plan to add that at some point. So I feel like conservatively, I should hit $24,000 by the end of the year. That is my goal. Now, why is that a big deal? Because based on my projected monthly returns of, th or of three to 6%, that should give me um, a, a, like from that point forward, I should be averaging a thousand dollars a month, every month, just about, just about every single month. Um, with few exception, it would have to be a bad month for me not to average a thousand dollars a month at that point. So here's a key, a thousand dollars a month for a lot of people, that's a weekly salary, a thousand dollars a month. I've essentially got one week of a full-time salary covered theoretically. So you do that three more times, you got the whole month covered. That's every month. Now, I'm not looking to live off of this money, but that's how powerful it is. Like People don't understand how powerful $1,000 per month is, but it's incredibly powerful. If you look at what it would take to be able to earn $1,000 a month if you invested in rental property, for example, I can tell you what it would take. If you consider average vacancies, if you consider single family home, if you considered average vacancy rate, repair rate, plus taxes, and if you looked at what it took to earn net, 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 um, just to give you one example, I can tell you based on the numbers that I'm very intimately aware of, you know, you're looking at a 40 to 60% net net number based on gross rents that a tenant may pay you. So let's just say 50%. If you can get 1% return a month gross, that's good, but that's not net. So if you had a hundred thousand dollar property and you got a thousand dollars a month, that would be really good. Net net is about $500. So you would need about $200,000 in real estate property based on the numbers that I'm intimately aware of to net net earn about a thousand dollars a month. Now this is obviously we're talking apples and oranges because that net number is post taxes. And, and theoretically this number that I'm showing you with options is not post taxes. But with that being said, keep in mind, I'm earning airdrop points from possibly three different airdrops. So conservatively that thousand dollars still, you know, rings true. That's still, a really big deal. If you look at what it would take to earn $1,000 a month with an annuity, for example, with an annuity to earn $1,000 a month, depending on the annuity, you're going to need somewhere between $250 plus $1,000 just to make $1,000 a month. And if, if I'm able to earn that here selling options, the best part about it is that's $1,000 a month I can use to buy more Bitcoin, to buy more Ethereum, to buy more altcoins, Solana, Sui, whatever I want. That's what's incredible about what we're doing here. All right, all right. I'm going to wrap this up. I've rambled on too long. Sorry I couldn't get this trade on camera. Hopefully you'll forgive me. Hopefully you appreciate the transparency and the effort that I'm putting into this series. Do me a favor. If you appreciate that, smash that like button, click the subscribe button, click the bell notification icon, and click all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Crypto Wealth. I'm out.